in reaction to the class part, it's been interesting to try to explain to my parents and relatives what this class is. And I've kind of been able to track my own opinion of the class through different explanations. And at the beginning of the semester, um, my parents thought it was hilarious that I was going to be dancing on a landfill. And my dad said it was like the most hippie, ridiculous, nonsensical class ever. And I said, well, you know, this is why you sent me to Wesleyan. Like, I'm here to take the weird experimental classes and see where they take me. And, um, I wasn't skeptical, but I didn't, I didn't quite know what to make of it, and I, I took it partly because it was this like out there, experimental, interdisciplinary, new approach to learning. And the first couple of weeks, I was pretty unsure, and it felt like we were reading a textbook about climate change and then doing like a couple of dance warm-ups. And once the intensive started going, I really felt the shift and. Um, I took it seriously and I felt like my classmates took it more seriously and um, what was really impressive was the teacher's ability to go out on a limb and um, explore with us and that's like a really exciting thing to get a teacher like Barry who has been teaching science forever and like is a really really science oriented guy to take these risks with us and that's like the most impressive thing you could ask of a teacher. So what we want to talk about today is we want to do two things. We're going to explore some aspects of the missions. This class was an experiment to see if we could explore in depth one of the major issues facing our society and the world today and do it in a way that will lend itself to action by our students regardless of what their opinions are. Keep a kind of um, openness about this particular exploration we're doing. I'm happy to be um, co-teaching a course with Barry in the spring, so the the artists will be doing um, uh, scientific experiments, and the scientists <coughs> will. Well, the truth is that we're going to not say who's who, right. and that everyone will be doing everything. So that we're really breaking down the idea of these very strict yeah. and firm disciplines um, to begin with. <coughs> so I'm excited about that. The art and science together really works because it just brings in um, the left brain and the right brain and two different minds um, thinking about the same problem. And for me, the thing that I liked best about the course was um, taking lectures and information about the specifics of climate change and then sort of applying them to performances. It let us sort of express our ideas um, in a way that made sense to us. The experiment was to combine art science and social science into a scholarly inquiry about global climate change. In what way are we going to reduce it? We use the landfill as both a metaphor and a real laboratory for studying both the cultural and scientific impacts of our society on global warming. The landfill offers a spectacular opportunity for us to integrate information through multiple lenses and for us to derive a more complete and more informed understanding. During the laboratory portion of our class, we immersed ourselves in four major issues that have profound impacts upon global climate change. The first was the removal of carbon from the atmosphere by trees and plants, otherwise known as carbon sequestration. The second is about heat reflectivity and the types of surfaces on our planet that reflect heat. The third is about carbon emissions that were released into the atmosphere in order to manufacture the items now buried in the landfill. And fourth, the release of methane into the atmosphere by the landfill. Each of these projects encompassed studies and information from art to science so that the final projects would convey to the Wesleyan community as well as to the lay public ideas about global climate change. Our study of methane was very exciting because it demonstrates how art can inform science. The students first visualized the landfill as a giant burial mound in which organic materials such as vegetables, foods, and the like were not composted and therefore buried too early. They then conceptualized and later performed a New Orleans-style jazz funeral for the compost that went to its grave too early. 
To study the methane, they constructed field devices and captured the methane that was escaping from the landfill. That's right. He's right. Go ahead. They then took those samples into the lab and learned how to use the mass spectrophotometer in order to analyze the amount of methane and calculate its impact on the planet. This information then became a critical part of the eulogy they wrote about compost. Based on rough estimates over the course of a year, Middletown's landfill will spew out 10,664 metric tons of methane. Similarly, the group studying the heat reflectivity of the landfill and the neighborhood around the landfill made the connection from the skin of the earth to the skin of their bodies and then painted the results of their studies on themselves. Using their bodies, they made a sculptural installation of body art telling the story of how our modification of the landscape affects global warming. What we really attempted to do was not put art in service of science. In other words, here are some art techniques that you could use to teach science. And although that can be very effective, Anne and I are trying to do something completely different. What we're trying to do is to get to a place where we can teach subjects such as global climate change in a deep scholarly way, but allow the disciplinary boundaries to blur. We want the students to develop the skill to integrate information through many lenses and not treat the information hierarchically. Anne and I truly believe that this will promote more effective understanding of complex issues such as global warming and will lead to changes in our society. There's so much more that artists can do, sculptors and painters and writers, everybody, in terms of reframing how we look at the world and how we look at the problems and making us understand these problems more effectively. And if we really are going to change how society views these issues, it's not going to simply be by a scientist standing up and telling people what the problems are. We need to engage people completely in these issues. That is using the full range of expression to encourage their feelings and to promote a more complete understanding. Only by engaging the public in these issues will we begin to affect societal action. We cannot hope to do this without a full collaboration between art and science. So I can book you in. Thank you so much. I'm glad you guys are back in business. Yeah, I know. It's good to be open. We were closed for almost two years. What? Yeah, that printer job. Some guy came in, left his printer, plugged in for 24 hours. Ms. Maple was busy absorbing that CO2 for almost two years. Oh, oh shoot. I left my toaster plugged in. Mr. Oak is going to kill me. Better run. <laughs> oh, yay. My paper's done.